What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we need to go back to the Dragon Ball Super card game. Now, I know we've not done too many Dragon Ball Super videos lately. Hopefully, we'll get a whole bunch more in the near future. But today, Bandai have gone and... Well, they've gone and banned free cards, limited a card, and errata a card. So, frankly... That's pretty big news. That's a lot going on in one go. It's probably time we had a little bit of a look at what's going on. Now, this is all coming around because set seven, Assault of the Saiyans, is going to be coming out on August the 2nd. And Bandai have said, now look, our plan is to chuck out these ban lists before the sets actually arrive so that we can essentially be ready for the new meta. That makes perfect sense to me. So what they've gone and done is they've had a look and they've gone, nope, sorry, ladies and gentlemen, we've got to make a couple of changes. So let's start off having a little bit of a look at some of the bands, shall we? They have banned Bad Ring Laser. And I know a bunch of people saw this coming. This is not shall we say, completely out of the blue. It is a one-cost yellow card, and it's got a counter-counter skill. Place one yellow card from your hand in the drop area. Negate the counter. It allows you to counter your opponent's counters. So you're trying to do stuff, and then your opponent's like, boom, counter, and then you're like, no, boom, counter. And the problem with this very simply is it is a one cost card as bandai themselves have pointed out it is the only counter counter negation card with an energy cost of one it has few restrictions on usage so it can be included easily in almost any deck yes it's got the one yellow cost but outside of that there are very few decks that can't pop this in and they did chuck out a couple of combos in their article, basically saying if you combine it with Mirror Creator Absorbed and Furthering Destruction Champa, you get overwhelming power for little energy, and once your opponent gets to two life, it's basically over. Mirror Creator Absorbed, it's got over Realm 4, it's got Deflect, which means it can't be affected by counterplay skills. And when you play the card using Union, your opponent chooses three cards from their hand and sends them to their warp. You get double strike for the duration of the turn. And when you attack, you get plus 5,000 power for each card in your warp. Furthering Destruction Champa, when you combo with it, you choose one of your attacking cards. It gains double strike for the duration of the battle. And if your opponent's trying to counter them, you're like, boom, bad ring laser, gutted. And also, they make an excellent point that now they've got a one-cost counter-counter card. So any high-cost counter cards can just be negated using bad ring laser. So it kind of paints the card designers into a corner here where they're going yeah we've made this really good counter card oh but it's quite expensive and bad ring laser is just going to count on a counter for a single energy another card which has gone away has been banned is unwavering solidarity shagesh a card which has seen a lot of play over well since it was released basically the thing is it's a two cost card one yellow and it's a super combo card which means it is limited to four in a deck in that you can only have four super combo cards and it's got a skill when you combo with it if your leader card is yellow and your life is at four or less this card gains 10,000 combo power bearing in mind it's free to combo then choose up to one saiyan in your hand with an energy cost of three or less and then play it this came around way back with the apes when it was initially released and people were worried about just swarming Saiyans onto the field using cards like this. And essentially, that's what happens. Now, admittedly, there is a fairly strong counter to this. In the form of Time Control Cronoa, a card which really does seem like it was printed to basically get rid of this. It's got Deflect, so it's not affected by counterplay skills. And when you play this card, you draw a card and your opponent may not play battle cards from their hand with the skills of cards with super combo 
for the duration of the game. Basically, it stops your opponent playing characters using unwavering solidarity Shigesh. So that kind of cool. The problem is, we're now basically saying, yeah, you need to whack Time Control Cronoa into your deck because otherwise Shigesh is going to wreck you. Or at least have a huge advantage. And nobody wants that. Nobody wants to be painted into a corner where they're forced to play this one card because another card is just running rampant. So for that reason, it's been banned. And I kind of like this because it means that all of a sudden, rather than having to play a particular card or two to counter cards which you don't really want to, now you're able to open up some deck building options a little bit. This makes me happy. The final ban we've seen is Minus Kill Zone, a free card. It doesn't cost anything. Send free cards from your drop area to your warp. Draw one card. And your opponent may not activate counterplay skills for the duration of the turn. See, here's the thing. The Dragon Ball Super card game is supposed to be an interactive game. It is designed to have both players interacting whether it's their turn or not. Hence why we've got these counterplay skills. I'm going to play something, oh no you're not. I'm going to attack, oh no you're not. Counter cards mean that you've got to pay attention during your opponent's turn and you can essentially affect the game even when it's not your turn to be doing stuff. And what Miner's Kill Zone does, for no cost whatsoever, is it allows you to turn your opponent's counters off for a turn. Which means all of a sudden your opponent doesn't get to do what they want to do in terms of countering you, which means they basically sit there doing nothing. So that interactivity for which we strive in the Dragon Ball Super card game, yeah, that, that, that's gone away. And then, of course, we get back to a point we've already made back when we were looking at Bad Ring Laser. Any counterplay cards with high cost become too risky because they can all just be turned off with Minus Kill Zone for no cost. So nobody's going to want to build a deck with nice, expensive counterplay cards in knowing that anyone can just take a Minus Kill Zone into their deck so that on the turn you really need it, you don't get to use it. It gets rid of interactivity and it really hurts in terms of just deck building and game design. We don't want it, ladies and gentlemen. He gone. Ah, she gone, I suppose. Now, there has been one limited card and that is called Bloodlust. Now, this is a counterplay card. Yeah, you're probably seeing a bit of a theme here. The countering cards, they, they are really being taken down a peg or two. Cold Bloodlust is a one-cost yellow card. It's got a counterplay skill. If your leader card is Freezer's Army, the battle card played has its skill negated for the duration of the turn. It is a one-cost counterplay card if you've got Freezer's Army. It's really good. It's really cheap. It's being limited to one per deck. It's not being banned. It is being limited to one per deck. And the reason here very simply is we're getting rid of the cards that hurt it. Bad Ring Laser. A one cost counter to this counter. Oh wait, no, you can't play that. It's been banned. Well, Miner's Kill Zone. That turns off counter. Oh, well, no, wait. That's also been banned. If we're going to ban... Probably the two best answers to it, and it's amazing, we probably need to have a look at this as well. It's not been banned, it's been limited to one per deck, and the reason here largely is because this isn't an every deck kind of card. This is a Freezer's Army kind of card, so that means that it's not quite so easy to take advantage of. So there we go. There's also been one Irata, Paragus Quelling the Beast. It used to read, cards in your battle area can't be placed in their owner's drop areas by your skills. It now reads, cards in your battle area can't be placed in their owner's drop areas by your leader's card skills. Not going to be as impactful on the game. But it would be rude if I did not at least mention it. Now, these are going to be coming in on Friday, July the 26th. 
in North America, Oceania, Asia, and Latin America. It's not coming in till August the 9th in Europe because we get the sets later. Boo, etc. In France and Italy, it is coming in from the pre release of Series 7 Assault of the Saiyans. Although French and Italian copies of Paragus will have the corrected text at release, so that's not going to be an issue. Sweet. And then they finish with just telling us there will be another update before the release of Series 8. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Those are the band, the errata, and the limit, what you need to know. But I want to know how you feel about this. Are you happy about this? Are you sad about this? Is it opening up your deck building options or is it ruining your favorite deck? Let me know in the comment section, ladies and gentlemen. Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, where we talk about games like Dragon Ball and Transformers and whatever takes my fancy. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching Wossy Plays.